Alrighty then, welcome to another Million Dollar Trade Room recap. You guys have been absolutely smashing it this week, and I can't wait for you guys to check out some of the results. Hang to the end of the video for the results section. Tonight, our primary focus is going to be around the entire Ask Vinny Questions section for the month. If you guys have put in those questions, and I told you guys I'll be answering those live, we're going to do that here tonight. Some of the more advanced questions, those things are going to be going over here tonight. Of course, if you want to just learn our strategies and all that kind of stuff, the link is down in the description down below on all the training, and you can go watch those, the straightforward stuff, but you're going to get some of the advanced level stuff if you've been looking for some of that. Tonight is going to be a good night to get into that because so, people have asked some really great questions. And let's get into it right now. Roll it! Alrighty then, let me crank that music on down. Hope you guys are having a fantastic evening. And of course, make sure you understand that trading is risky, folks, and this is not for everybody. And those of you who are interested in getting into the trading thing, let's go into some of that here tonight. So if you're not familiar with the Ask Any Questions section, this is over here on the left-hand menu in our trade room. Again, you can join our trade room for free. The link is down in the description as well to join us over here in the Discord chat. And it is, uh, it's a good place to hang out. But uh, here is, if you want to put in and ask me any questions section, see me answer it in here. This is where these are coming from. We'll hit these here first. So one of the questions that had to come in is from Eric CC. He says, a uh, kindly request the solution to interpretation of the direction of the tide and wave chart. Okay, tide and wave chart. I encountered difficulties in reading the direction of my tide and wave chart, especially when prices are between the two rivers. We'll talk about what that means. When there's no dot, or two finger salute. So he's saying there's an exception. Sometimes he does when these two items are involved. This very, very good, well put together question. I've searched for order of operations um, related videos and watched them several times, but I still can't find the best answer for this problem. Is there a specific video on the topic that can be studied for me? Okay, so um, let's draw out a couple of boxes here. So um, some of our higher time frames, um, let's just draw these side by side, because he's talking about the tide and the wave, okay? Tide and tide and the wave. So this is the highest time frame up here on the tide and the wave. So he's trying to ask what happens when we get inside of the golden ropes, okay? Again, there'll be two kind of coming through here. They can be in different locations. And he's asking particularly, what do we do when price you know, he, he gets it when he's around here, but when it, we're right in here, like we're stuck inside the golden rope. And he doesn't have an indication, meaning we don't have a, a blue dot, pink dot. I'm just going to draw some in here. You know, dots, we got that. He says, I'm good with that. Uh, Two-finger salute, if it's in there, you know, we have rules around that. If you got a two-finger salute, two salute and it's inside those, we're looking for the reversal. But what do you do when there's nothing? This is a good question, right? What do you do? So... Here was my response. I did type this one out from before and we'll go through some of this. So you guys might've had this question as well. Like what do you do on the higher time frame? Let me start by saying, remember the highest time frame is our bias. What does bias mean? Now bias does not mean that you're 100% accurate, right? In, in anything in life. But the bias is going to tell you, well, it's more than likely X. If you're having to choose between X and Y, we're looking for, Will, what what has edge? Remember, everything that we're doing here is about finding the golden edge. And speaking of golden edges, I think some of you guys got some packages this week. We sent out um, quite a few of those that we had needed to catch up on for folks who hadn't gotten their golden knife yet. So hopefully you guys got those. If you haven't, be checking your mailboxes. Those should be getting to you, you know, within the next couple of days. We had some people get theirs today. So finding the golden edge. The edge itself is direction right well don't you realize that every trade that we take is either long or short right what's the edge do you have edge in one direction so we get that from the higher time frame again uh we're trying to get in the direction of the trend now again trend can be shifting and how do you determine that we use two time frames right but the answer is when we are entering in on a strategy you are coming down to make two decisions big or small always remember that start well, I don't want to start with, but always keep this at the forefront of your mind, big or small, okay? So here it was, the official answer to this, if you guys want to go and pull this out later um, or take notes on this video, okay? This is, <clears throat> what is the last signal on each, okay? So start one is, was there a signal on the last one? Was it green or was it red? Simple as that, okay? So go with that, number one, that's your normal bias. Whatever the most recent one was that held, okay? So. If it was a green dot, then we are looking long. 
Simple as that, okay? And again, I don't care if we're in the golden ropes. I don't care if we're outside of them. It doesn't matter. What was the latest, okay? So check that, number one, if you don't have any other directional information, okay? Then, when you're going through the order of operations, we are moving our eyes from the highest time frame to the lowest time frame. Simply answer the final question before hitting the button on an entry setup, big or small. Okay, right there. Big or small. Uh, simply put, what is our big picture bias for going big slash holding longer? Right there. Going big or holding longer? Because that's all that matters. At the end of the day, we are by default punching in and trying to hit target one, target two, right? Getting 10 or 15 ticks, no problem. But if we are trying to establish size, this is the probably the most difficult part of our job with algo box traders, okay? Not other traders, traders, that's a whole different animal. They're having, a, they're trying to struggle just to find entries, okay? Our biggest problem is adjusting on our size. How big do we go on each set of trades as we are, you know, trekking through our five trade system, right? So your five trades and which one to go big, etc. Now, some people will just go big when they get to the bonus trade, which is perfectly fine. That is perfectly fine as well. But his question is asking, how do I make the decision? And I think he's asking direction, okay? And again, direction is less important than our strategy, okay? If the strategy tells us this is a long entry, I'm gonna take that long entry. But the secondary question is this big or small, and I want to hyper emphasize this. I know I've repeated it several times, but this is because it's extremely important in my opinion. This is the difference between making a few hundred and a few thousand with the trading program right here is big or small based on the higher time frame. Go with that higher time frame, and that's what you're trying to establish. So if you know that the high time frame bias is to the long side, but you get a perfect setup to the short side, Okay, am I gonna skip on a headshot inside of a PRZ that's red? No, of course I'm gonna try to take that shot, right? So I'm gonna take that, but as I'm doing it, what am I thinking? If my bias is long, all right, I'm not going all in, okay? This is about adjusting your size. If you're talking in terms of poker, this is, look, I'm not going all in on my chips. I got a pretty good hand, right? You got a pretty good hand, you got maybe pocket jacks or you know, you got some face cards and you look at what's coming out on the flop and you're like, you know what, I'll, I'll throw some money at this. But the other guy across the table all of a sudden goes all in. You're like, uh, I don't know about that. Okay, makes sense? Um, again, because nothing is ever 100% on anything that we're doing, but to ask the question, higher time frame, what we want to do is, if you can establish it, fantastic. Look at the most recent part. That is the most important. And at the end of the day, just trade the strategy that's in front of you. Don't overthink it. Okay, that is where most people get really lost is overthinking things. Okay, remember, you're taking a shot at it. Now, there are going to be times when everything's lined up. Okay, you're just going to know. You're going to like, man, I got a cluster right here, a uh, cluster of crosses. I've got a headshot in there. We're inside of PRZ. It's shorts favorable. This is red, you know, and then all of a sudden you start to hear the drum beats in the room and the audio box is going, blah, 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 and it's just telling you, you know, we're hitting the tape hard you know, and you're gonna go, right? You wanna, I don't wanna say go all in, but you know what I'm saying. You wanna push the chips. In fact, speaking of all in, look, we had, you know, one of our big traders in our room. I mean, you gotta know when to go big. And there are some people who are very, very experienced in our room, you know, running multi-million dollar accounts. And, you know, one of our guys today and yesterday combined made over a million dollars, a million, 1.2 on their own with that. And you guys can check out those results there in a room with that. And I think at one point I saw one of their trades was 40, was it 3,900? contracts it was huge right but to be able to go all in when the system is like you can just tell right we had a big drop off yesterday huge move and again things move much faster down than they do on the upside so you know all that anyway i could talk about this stuff forever i love this stuff it gets me get me gets me real excited let's see uh he says i may choose to put on additional runners versus if i get a red short opportunity against the trend i may still be uh i still may take it but I'm not going all in, right? That, that was the concept that I just kind of went through. Anticipation of a smaller return, okay? So what I, my, my conclusion of that is don't sweat it, okay? If you can't read the higher time frame, just stick to the lower time frame at that moment. Just don't go all in. If you can read the higher time frame and you're like, yeah, man, it's clearly up. We're clearly long side biased, okay? Then on the long side stuff, get a little bit bigger, got it? But if it's in any course of flip side of the other way, right? Hope you guys get that. That was a long, 
explanation. It was with that five minutes of my video already. Oh, 10 minutes already gone. Oh my goodness. I'm terrible at these things. All right. Uh, Dan says, in the videos, the hard stop is set at 25. I noticed in the two ATMs, it's set to 15. Has the reasoning changed on the hard stop? Yes. So if you don't know this, um, we've said this several times, but I'm going to hit it again. 25 is now 15 hard stop uh, for our ATMs. All right, so our current ATMs, if you install ours right out of the box, this is already set for you. You don't have to worry about it. But if you watch some of my old videos, like a couple years ago, um, hard stop was at 25 again, and then you have mental stops ahead of that. We're not actually, so all you little trolls, hold off. This is not, no, friend has got 25 pick stops. <laughs> That's terrible. No, it's not. This is the place to keep it out of the way. I've got a long, lengthy explanation around that. If you have um, conversations around stop hunting and keeping your stop out of sight, for the time it's like springing on um on your prey all right if you are you know speaking in those types of terms you're you're wanting to hide yourself and then boom and then you arrive but you still need to make sure you're stopping out in the proper locations but yes i suggest now our system is just so powerful folks way op this this is a good spot right there and the market volatility we don't want to have those incidents where you get that smack back 25 you really never ever ever want to hit that but 15 hard stops yes that is the answer Next question. I've been having an academic question of curiosity pertaining to the lesson on many timing lines. Okay, this is an old school one. I understand Darwin's boxes, but would like to understand more about FIB prices. In the video, you mentioned using the FIB F8 tool, yes, to draw the FIB lines, and then the F10 tool around the magical Darvis boxes to draw timing lines. Is new, unclear what I'm looking for, the steps to turn it. Okay. Again, this is a purely academic question to appreciate the history of your tools. <laughs> okay. Uh, the video is dated 2016. Yeah, long time ago. Yep, five plus, and you've developed your tools far beyond that. Yeah. So I think you kind of almost answered the question on most of this stuff. How do we currently use it? Um, we don't use it too much. Okay. Only reason I'm using the FIB tool now is when I'm measuring out a double move on a DCDM. Okay. Everything now is already coded for you internally. So all the goodies are already there. But he's asking about this screenshot from an old video here. Okay. So again, what, what, how do we draw our crosshair? Right, long side vertical cross, and how do I get this section right here? How do I get that pinpoint spot? Yes, we are doing that. And he's asking, you know, how do I when we're measuring this out? Like, what was this back here? Okay, this is this is J hook territory on our entries, right? Automatically drawn for you. Timing lines drawn out to the right. Um, you know, I don't want to take this explanation of this video to you know explain all of those things. You can watch those videos themselves, but um, I believe his question in general was. Um, he wanted to understand how the FIB prices, so the price side, um, up and down. Well, so we always wanted two legs to stand on. If you guys watch my old, old videos on two legs to stand on, well, what do you think our dots are, right? I'm literally showing you the two legs now and multi-level confluence when we pop up here and I'm hitting multi-fibs right there, all internal, so you don't have to use any FIB tool. It's the answer. Our tools have developed to a sophistication level where we are catching multi-fib zones on the fly in real time. That, that's the answer. And it looked like you kind of already had that, that yeah, we do. I don't know if that's a great answer for that, but there we go. Uh, Roger says, Hey guys, I'm in my first 40 days and training a couple questions. Should I go back to the discord post to find the range settings for the day I want to replay and enter them in the chart or is it best to use a stop P1 settings? Uh, my SIM 15. Okay. Um, good question. Uh, I think I answered this in one of the lesson uh, library threes, uh, if you're looking for the long lengthy explanation, but in, as far as getting this set up, you do not need to go and do that. I have said like a default for the wave chart, 21 or 24, okay, 21 or 24. Take your pick. If you want it faster and you want more setups, obviously 21, whoops, okay, 21. You want a little bit less, or you're trying to get a little more specific or higher time frames, 24. Simple as that, okay? Take your pick on that. However, if you really want the absolute, then yes, the answer is, Roger, you would need to go and scroll into the premium member section and look for what, um, what it was for that week. And I'll give a brief example on that since we're, we are in-depth answering questions here today. So I'm going to go into the premium members chat, premium members only, and search for exclamation mark ranges is uh, i'm sorry optimize I think, I think i do ranges yeah there it is exclamation mark ranges is what i would do a search for okay because i always kick this out afterwards so that's a good search term 
and you will find a ton of these, okay? So you'll choose your instrument and you'll know exactly the period right there. But again, look at the ballpark numbers, okay? And I think that, you know, when I'm usually doing practice 21 or 24, I usually do 24, um, but 21 if you wanna get some more setups, especially if you're a two finger salute person. If you are using two finger salutes, use 21. Okay. Hopefully that answers that question. Um, I'll show you what a search looks like on that. Exclamation mark, ranges. Over here on the right. Oh, why is it pulling every range? All right, Discord, now I'm disappointed. What do I have to do, put quotation marks around it? Quotation mark ranges. I don't swear I've done that before. Does that not work anymore? I guess from Vinny ranges? Um, we'll get back to you on that one. I thought that was... I thought, that, I thought that's how we usually find that. But yeah, 21, 24, stick with that for now and then search with it uh, more specifically for each week. John says, is there a significance we should know about concerning the size of the white crosses or smaller ones weaker due to sizes affect DCDM or clusters? Okay, so there is probably about one pick of difference on either edge on each one of these. And the answer is just stick to the rules. Um, there's no specific, I mean, there is a difference. Obviously there are different sizes, but it has to do with Two different types of bars in the algo um they are if the bar if it shows up on a bar with a tail or not i noticed tail no tail okay um tail no tail okay simple as that okay so bars with no tail bars with tail and it basically gives you if you're taking your stop you gotta pull it back just a leather hair and that's it put your stop in the proper location the entries on the, the crosses, you should already know. And of course, stops going at the top of the bottom of the crosses. So if it's a bigger cross, put it there. Again, it should handle all of it for you. That's the magic of what we've got going on there. That it's the perfect level of stop for each one. And again, it's adjustable and adaptable per bar set that you put it on, right? That's the really cool part about our stuff is that it adapts. It's not the exact same. So people are like, well, Vinny, what's the stop on a, on a cross? The crosses are not the same size, folks. The crosses are not the same size. They adapt to the environment that they're placed in. So just follow the rules and let the tools do the work. All right, Roger says, I'm confused about what measure to obtain 50% target line on a harmonic. Okay, tricky question here. One video, seemed like you said measure from the deepest pivot. Um, in the next video, it says you're measuring from the shorter pivot on the end, clarify. Okay, so harmonics, each type is different. This is one, look, I don't really get into a lot of harmonic studies. I have, Look, I didn't invent the harmonic, uh, like uh, Chick-fil-A. They didn't invent the chicken, but they did invent the chicken sandwich. You know what I'm saying? So we just made it better. So a cipher, it measures different than a shark, measures different than a crab, measures different than a butterfly, measures different than a diamond. You get my point? There's a bunch of different ones. So that I would encourage you to go to other sources if you want that information. I actually do not. So here's my other answer though, is you don't actually need to know that information. Okay. Um, sorry, is that music too loud for you guys? I feel like it's, it's like really blaring for me for some reason tonight and I can't get it down to a lower level. Hopefully that's a little better. I'm going to crank this down back here. Okay. Um, yeah, direct you to other sources. If you want to know like harmonic structures, Uh, I don't know, traditional targets. Um, trading, yeah, it, basically, I, I'm not really going to go specifically deep into those, but um, like your harmonic butterfly pattern structures. And then with targeting, you know, they're just going full on every single one of them. Look, this is the problem with harmonics, okay? They're a nice spot. They're great for entries. When you're dealing with targets, everything is relative. Okay. So just follow my rules. My rules. Again, if you want the 50% rules, what I was explaining in that video, I believe was the traditional sense of those. But remember, what do we want to do? I want target one, target two. If it comes off of a lower time frame, ones or twos, what's our target? Pop quiz. You should say 10 or 15, right? If it's coming off of fives or eights, what should it be? 15, 25. Right? Target one, target two. Everything else is relative. That's how well you can read the markets. That depends on where, what he was just asking earlier, tide, wave, that, that determines on volatility. That day, do we have news events around that day? 
Is that going to push farther? And you're going to add to position on, remember, well, if you're getting in our final 40 days, you will learn how to half on, half off add through your positioning. That uh, That is more important as you go forward. But targeting for that, because his, his question is specifically around, well, how do I measure the targets? Well, each harmonic is different. So a, uh, a bat crab may be from the back to the top. However, on a cypher, it's from the front leg to here. Okay, so each one is different. You'll have to go and learn each harmonic if you want to do that, which I don't actually recommend. I don't measure those. I don't deal with them at all. I exit on a, a green dot, for instance. If this is a red and I'm entering in short for price to go down, like I'm hitting target one, target two. I can't tell from the screenshot, it's a little blurry, but let's say that this came off of the twos. Okay, then my target one is 10, target two, 15, okay? My runners, I'm, I'm almost always trying to hold until I see an opposing signal. Uh, I'll throw a fiber right there, okay? I can't type tonight. <laughs> okay. Opposing signal, and in this case, it would be a green or, again, PRZ. It can be some other signal that's coming down in this zone, right? Or big red delta on, uh, now, right? On the, fl on the flip side. So this thing sucker, you know, this, this thing is getting sucked right straight down, and then, boom, I want to see a green dot? Great. I'm going to take half off. Right. If I've got more, great. And then if I break through it, maybe I'm going to add to position. So I don't want to get into the complex parts of it. He's asking about how to measure it. The answer is, depending on the harmonic, go look up which harmonic you're talking about. You would need to study every harmonic structure, which um, there's about a, about a dozen, maybe less, eight to finish. Okay. Um, but yeah, here's what I'm going to exit on right there. Right. So no, that's a 50% one. And... I think I was talking about this traditionally, but now again, this might be an old video, but I'm really looking for, if this is a crossover timing like this and I'm taking a short like this, I'm looking for a spot to take my exit with a dot, but then I'm looking to add, hopefully I get like a cross up here to help me add up. Anyway, we're getting, I'm getting it real messy and I know we're taking, I'm taking too long to answer these questions, but yeah, that's what these are for, right? Ask me any questions. So we go into detail and you want to hear it <laughs> in length. Ad nauseum, this is, uh, this is the answer. And this is the way. Um, is there a way to see a list of all the bot commands, like exclamation mark gears? Oh, that's a good question. Not yet. We don't have that, but that's a good one. All right, Dan. Um, yeah, he's asking if we can do all the commands, like gears and vix and all the cool little commands. You know what? I'll, I'll try to get a command list for that. That's a good idea. Uh, Millionaire says... I was watching a video on the automated version of Alga Box, and it seems like it is opening orders and closing them at a very rapid, fast clip. How many trades that the thing open? Is it okay? Again, look, non non um, non platinum member asking questions about things and making assumptions. Like just no, you're wrong about everything you just said here. No, no response. Um, you know, learn the other stuff first, and then you get to more complex stuff. Watching the double cross, double move, it shows us measuring a line with a fib tool. Yes, using it as a target. The latest example shows a PRZ box above. Would you have adjusted a target if we saw this? Yes. Or seeing it until it throws a red dot or hits a stop using PRZs as caution lines? Yes. So, good question here. So, PRZ, in fact, this one right here, this is a big caution one. You got a, he's showing one with a, can you guys see that? It might be small. I need to make my dot a little bit smaller. Here we go. Okay, there is a double cross right there. Okay, so what's a double cross, double move? I want from here to here and here to here, right? That's your fib tool 100%. Again, if you're lost on this, just go watch the video on DCDM, traditional DCDM. However, there's a big red PRZ right back behind it. So what does that tell you? I'm actually gonna look for the reversal. Now, this one happened to be a push up. Well, if you think about why, it's a shark. What do we know about a shark? A shark has the largest PRZ. Wow, I cannot type tonight for the life of me. Largest PRZ of all harmonics. Okay, that's why it's got the big fin, shark fin for it, okay? So, did this push far into it? Yes, it did. Um, why this one worked out? Probably because it's a shark. 
and ended up going up. However, if this shows up right in front of a PRZ, I'm usually going to either reverse it or skip it. So good question on that one and using a good example. Yes, it is definitely a caution light. If it's happening around a PRZ, I'm going to treat it like a PRZ cross, which is a reversal, right? David French, just wondering, um, trying to get entries as close to the dot as possible. I noticed on this one, the dot was printed two bars later. Okay, so first thing, um, on bar close. If you have a very fast computer, you can take off this setting. But listen, if you come to me and you're having problems, your computer starts hanging up on you, do not come call me, okay? I'm telling you right now, leave it at on bar close. Is a setting for every Ninja Trader, it's just how it works internally. Do you want me to calculate on every tick coming in? Again, our stuff is extremely intensive. You, I mean, you better have a freaking beast. You better be running over five gigahertz if you turn this on. So use with caution if you want this to show up immediately and with absolutely no delay. But yes, if you see it and it's delayed, there could be, you know, there's there's little reasons for that. This is one of them. Okay. Um, and uh, it's printed price is, is this normal? Should a PC speed issue? Yes. I have overclocked to 4.2. <laughs> that is not going to do it. If you have to overclock to get the 4.2, remember, I tell you guys, our standard is 4.5. So Mr. French, uh, just gotta tell you, yeah, you're, you're, don't, <laughs> okay, don't, you need, you're gonna have to have a beast, um, and it's about speed, it's not about core count, so people are like, oh, I got, I got 20, I got 20 threads, Benny, listen, I'm, I'm gonna teach you something tonight, threads, okay, what are they, as a computer person, um, it has to do with your data load, now you guys hear this all the time, but I'm gonna, you know, people throw these words out all the time. They don't have no idea what they're talking about. Vinny can explain this to you in a way that you're going to understand. Are you ready? So if you think about them in rows, uh, or let's do columns of Excel here for a minute. Those are terrible. All right. Uh, but... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So data flow. What are we getting? What data are we processing? Think about what trading is. This is a stream of prices. That's all you need to know right there. You can just end the whole thing. And I think you should get it right there. Stream of prices. Now, how wide is it? What's the width of the data? Uh, like three columns wide. Okay. Because what do we got? Price, time, quantity. That's it. That's it. This is your entire data stream. Okay. So people are like, well, I got all these threads. Look, I don't, your threads are not going to help you break up this data. This is streaming to you in real time. And you have to do this super fast. This is the difference between having like, in, um, you know, who to win a race. Do you want uh, one fast person or do you want 10 slow people? Uh, if you want to win, you need the one fast. Okay. So I don't need a bunch of threads. I need some super fast ones. Okay. That. Hopefully that answers that. It has to do with the data load, right? It's not about, oh, Ninja Trader sucks. It's not, Ninja Trader sucks. It's not multi-threaded. <sighs> Listen, all you people who think you know things, you don't. Come talk to me. And then you get, now you know, right? Now you're educated. I hear one more time. Someone's like, oh, Ninja Trader sucks because it's not multi-thread. No. Trading is not multi-thread, you nutbag. Now, if you're doing back tests, optimizations, whatnot, that's where multi-threads help you. Okay. If you're doing back tests and all kinds of, yes, but in real time, folks, one stream. Okay. You get it. Cause somebody's going to be like, oh, Benny, it helps and it works when it's multi-threaded uh, from back testing and optimization and multi -call. Yes. That's a different question, but thank you for changing the question. Are you want a straw man argument? Yeah, I can, we can get you, we can get to that one too. It's totally cool. And I'll, I'll say, you know what? You're right. But weren't we talking about trading? Oh yeah. Y'all can tell it's a sore spot with me. Why? Because people ask it all the time and they always troll They're like, oh, an trader sucks. Okay, sorry. David, next one. Mac, <laughs> Mac V was longs. Mac V was longs. Okay. Longs. Okay, got it, got it. Uh, got a green dot over pink dot. 
Green dot or pink dot. Okay. Maybe should have left alone due to green dot, then pink, then green dots. Woo, they got a lot going on there. Let me see. Open original. Can I? What you got here? Green dot over pink dot. Should he have left it alone? All right, so what do we got here? First thing I see is this. What do I see right here? What does this tell me? Insta, I'm not even looking at the rest of the thing and I'm thinking long. Everybody else thinking long here? Why? Because the reds have been flushed, okay? Red flush, so I am now thinking long. He also had longs favorable, yes? Does that tell me long? Yes, okay, so pink dot, eh, it might have some juice. It might not, right? Um, I'm seeing multi PRZs in green. Um, I see that. Okay, so before I see anything else, um, yeah, so I'm thinking long. Would I ignore the pink? Nah, possibly. We got two oof, double crosses right there as well. Yeah, I want to I want to long this, but you got you got a tough spot here. It's probably not time. Where's the timing? Yeah. Timing is way over here. Yeah, no surprise. Okay, so again, this is going to be a small trade. I'm already instantly, as soon as I see this, like I'm thinking, okay, small trade, even with a double cross, double move, like the double cross, here's the pivot. Here's the middle of the cross. So your target's going to be like right here. That's a bummer. Okay, so you're going to be in a spot. This is probably just going to chop up for a bit. I'd be curious what the MACV said. He said it says MACV green. I doubt that. The Mac V here, how would the Mac V be green like this? Okay, listen, first start one, you always give facts. Okay, and if you're gonna include, if you're gonna say Mac V, post a screenshot. So right now, I can tell you right now, Mac V is not green. Okay, Mac V may have most recently been green, but I will say that it is probably what we kind of call trash. <laughs> okay, um, but it looked like we didn't see the rest of that trade. Yeah, you should have gotten long. It was a good long right there. And then the pink showed up. Yeah, I mean, you got to take off some, but I can't see. Did it go down? I don't know. And then you moved your stop up, and I tell you guys not to do that. Okay, you're trying to trap this in. Look, you're playing scared when you do this, folks. This is a very, you know, I appreciate that he's doing a gift here. This is awesome that you do these. Um, your trade, though, so it comes up right here, and then you move your stop, like, up to right here. I mean, what are you going to do? You just, you just choke out every trade opportunity you've got. However, if you already knew this was going to be, a, you know, small trade, eh, that's okay. So there's my over lengthy critique as usual on, on that trade. But yeah, thinking to the long side was probably good, but you have to leave that in a little bit of uh, some room right there and pink dot shows up. Yeah, that's gonna ruin a party. <laughs> so at least briefly, um, it ain't ready to go. And timing, let's look at the timing. If you're really looking to get big on this at this time, um, we would need we would need to wait. Like we're in medium here and here we are technically large but king looks like it's got a gap of space it's not even showing up on your chart there so might wait and that's a mix that is a mix mesh uh so not super surprised by that and i believe that mac v if you go back and look at it was actually a probably a mix fest just looking at that right there uh we've also covered some theory behind the golden ropes theory Theory behind golden ropes. Uh, it's pretty simple on that one. It's the 50 and the 200. Very traditional measurements for um, getting the current moving average of what the market's at. The last 200 bars and the last 50 bars. Really, it's just a good, good solid, you know, we're not trying to overfit any of that kind of stuff. We need some good general guidelines and you can't go wrong with the 50 and the 200 those are our traditional golden ropes people are like why don't you cover them differently Vinny, so you know which one's which because i only show you the things that are necessary i don't care if it's near the 200 i don't care if it's near the 50 all i care is if it's near one of them or if it's in between them that's all you need to know that you're like well i need more information no you don't you're not a you're not a good trader until you can beat me at trading like no no you're not you're not uh, hi Vinny, I've been working on the demo version to do my gauntlet. Awesome. I had a question. I've been going through all six videos. Uh, there's more than that. And a lot of other videos as well. I've been playing around with the systems. Also been looking at market review. I want to say a lot more. There's 30 videos, folks. Um, if you are new going through the trial, trial section, 30 videos. Um, once you're a member, there's more than that. But uh, to really, you know, what I think, get it and ready to go. It's about 30. Um, they're on the website, same place. I'll show it to you here at the end of the video. 
Um, look at Marketplace Weekend. I have a novice question. Where is a novice question? Please see the screenshot below and advise me on what this means. I see a red dot with PRZ. Red dot with PRZ. Okay. And we expect the market to go down. Red dot and a PRZ. Okay. Yeah. However, longs are favorable. Ah, yes. Do I just ignore the red PRZ and the dot? Okay, so it's actually, that is called an HMD. So first FX Iceman, like when you're combining these things, this, you need to get to a point where you know what that strategy is called. Okay, I don't care about signals. I don't care about individual indicator stuff. What is the strategy? The strategy name is called HMD. Okay, so what you should say here is you had a red HMD. Okay, so should I ignore the red HMD? Because you had longs favorable, not necessarily. And focus on the market direction, given the algorithm matrix is also green in the short term. I'm less concerned with the short term, so no. Again, you got a lot of things to learn. FX Iceman. Okay, I can tell where you currently are. You got a long way to go. All right, so just be careful with that. Um, but let's let's answer the question. So what do we see as we come into this? So here's here's the red dot he's talking about right here. Okay, red dot. Can I slow this mouse down a little bit? Oh, super fast. Okay, um, super not smooth. So red dot is in there inside the PRZ, okay? But he's got longs favorable. And now, I, again, he didn't say what the MACV was. I more care about what the MACV was. Was the MACV upwards? And because this back end is red, I would actually say this is a good, I mean, this is a good normal, I would normally take try to take a short on that, okay? You got a red dot with a PRZ, okay? So you take it down, awesome. Now, the trick with this is, look how tight this PRZ is, okay? So you got a red dot right here. Where's your stop go? Well, stop goes right back behind the dot, which also happens to be right back there. So it's a very small stop. Now, when you enter, you're probably not gonna get in directly on the dot. So you're probably, your entry is probably here as you see this, okay? So the thing comes down, up, goes down. Right here, what should you do right here? Exit. All right, the answer should be exit. All right. Um, so again, not they're, they're not a hundred percent. We're none of our stuff is ever a hundred percent, right? This is just a this is just a bad one, okay? And it's a tough spot. You got a nice big move up into this area. You're probably not going to get you know one of these, right? And just usually not. So, and then we got a big beautiful green dot coming in here. We got some delta coming in. That's the wrong color for it. I'd rather see red to get long. However. What do we know about PRZ crosses? And this is so close. This is just a tough one. So showing this one, this is just like one of those deals. You just keep your stop tight. This was basically going to be a small loss any way you look at that. Um, you, I doubt you're going to be super quick on the draw, but if you see a whole bunch of these, you'll get used to seeing this. I can tell you that this little shape right here, that is an actual shape. I don't talk to you guys about this. Like I don't treat, teach this kind of like traditional, like, oh, here's a pattern, just a pattern by itself thing. But you'll see this a lot, okay? I'm not going to be looking to go, oh, this thing is gonna reverse this whole thing and go get, go down. I'm not, especially not when long's favorable and in the current market conditions. Um, but it still was a good spot because I'd say this Delta, I would still be looking up here as this Delta builds. I'm gonna look for a red dot again for this and then to look for that down move later because of that delta right there that is a huge green delta so if that's a flush move i'm going to look for another spot even if this one didn't work out um that was over lengthy isn't as usual um neon has very very lengthy analysis um he and i do not look at things the same so if you have success with what neon tells you congrats um again he does, we have a lot of crossover things that do mesh um but he is a lot of traditional old school stuff okay um i just yeah be careful again i always recommend if it didn't come from me just be careful again if he says Vinny says this then that's good uh but some of the stuff that he's talking about is um a little much neon you know i love you brother um all right very thanks company initiative okay so you get an answer on that uh okay rick says can i have the current OHL indicator in a favorable direction on my Mac V chart. Yes. Or should I have it only on the ripple charts? Um, no, you can definitely have it on that one. If you'd like, I ask because sometimes 500 bars of data doesn't. Yep. It's hundred percent true. Yes. Okay. 
Yeah, so he's pointing out one of the, the problems that we know we have. Okay, so look, why does this one say short's favorite? This one's long, this one's short. Okay, this has to do with, because of some of the performance stuff, um, we have this 500 bars thing, okay? Well, if the market has been very volatile, especially on NASDAQ, and NASDAQ will move a lot, again, on a high volatility day, even the MES, 500 bars will not go back to the beginning of the day. And we need the open level of the day from the night before, so that's why that works. Forget the why. The answer in the question is, can I put it here so that it's always accurate? Yes, you absolutely can. Why do I like it right here? Because I want it to stare you in the face to tell you, hey, if you're trading against this, right, rather than having to look again, up to you. Every person is a little bit different. I, my recommendation is that you have it on there, even if they're different. Look, they're this is still helpful information on this time frame on this one right here it is it is long favorable if you have a setup that came off of this i would be looking for the long um but if you want to have it just here so you have one to solve them all yes can you do that yes am i is it going to be the difference between winning and losing no this is one of those like gray areas you know Vinny doesn't care I'm just, I try to help you out. I want it spelled out right there in the middle. So as you're pressing the button, you know if you're going against long favorable or not. So you can make the final decision because only you can make this decision, folks. Big or small. Okay, at that moment, you got to think big or small on your account size and risk and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what do we got here? How stupid was history? It got wrecked at the stop out. Happened really fast. Okay, I remember this question. You guys probably go through some. This is a, some deep analysis going on right here. That right there is simply a bunny ear. Uh, bunny ear. I don't talk about too much. In fact, I moved it to a legacy strategy thing. You happen to have a bunny ear right there with the green dot right there, which makes his little head. You guys can see the little bunny. There's his little head. There's his little ears. That's the bunny. Okay. You're asking about you know getting wrecked on it. Uh, again, having a stop out. That's not a wreck. Um, don't ever think like, oh, I took a stop out. Oh, I got wrecked. Oh, no. I mean, well, the guy shot you in the face. Headshot. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, fine. But just, you know, the wreck to me is like a very big thing. Sure, but that trade, yeah, sure, got wrecked. But don't sweat it. That would be my answer. Easiest one on this is don't sweat it. Um, if you really did want to, you know, check on it. Um, anything that's going to tell you that besides that? No, just big push move up in the area. Um, timing, it just, it's a, that's a tough one. Tough one. It's a headshot, but it's also a bunny ear right there. Um, the other one, oh, you know what? Here's a big one. Here's an easy way to look right there. Now, this is our new like go-to thing. You see that Delta right there? Again, that's the, that means the longs got flushed right there. Okay, so any signal that could get a reversal at that point, there's your delta flush right there and again this is the most powerful folks if you're going to read anything against anything look just check the delta like it should be a final thing before you press that button okay get that delta with you man such a powerful tool okay so the delta pretty much tells you it all right there um double dot prz delta yeah same thing yes good he i think he eyeballed it he's like right there right it tells you this could get wrecked right here Okay. Yeah, it pushes up, but then coming down. That is the biggest delta of all of the big deltas. Like, here are some big deltas. This used to be big. Ding, 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 ding. This is like five times the size of what was big, you know, hours before in the morning. So watch that delta on that one. Where are we at here? Okay. Um, David French had a good answer to this. He said, a stop getting hit doesn't make it a bad trade. I, I can repeat that and put it up on your wall. Getting a stop out does not mean it had a bad trade. You know, when I play Battlefield, even though I beat everybody and I'm always top dog and number one in the servers that I'm on, on, on my team and whatnot, yeah, I'm still going to die a lot. All right? I don't want to say a lot, but you know, going to die. I don't go out there and go, you know, 75 kills and zero. Okay. You're gonna, you're gonna, you can still be a great player and have lots of little small, oh, you got me. Oh, I ran into a tree. Oh, you know, those kind of things. It happens. Um, so I did explain that. That's my answer. I did write that one out the other night. I uh, didn't want you to feel bad about that trade because yeah, it wasn't that bad a trade. Uh, yes, I understand. Yeah, he speaks logically. 
as well, but I'm not familiar with the use of volume zones. Yeah, again, volume zones. He was talking about volume zones. Again, I, I don't focus on those at all because technically those are support resistance and we have so much more powerful stuff than that. Um, yeah, so keep, take, yeah, keep some of that in mind. Uh, why does a Delta show up on the one and not on another? I guess I don't have any idea what info is behind the Delta trying not to overthink things, but what's up here? Um, okay, well, this is this is fairly simple. You know, there are, there are multiple time frames for a reason. Like, why? Hmm. Why not just have one time frame? You know, if you expect it to be the same, that's my easiest answer. Okay, if you expect it to be the same, if you don't know how big of a difference it is between, what do you got there? I can't, I can't see it because it's blurry. Let me see. Click on this. Maybe it'll be not blurry. It's the fives. Yeah, fives and threes. Look, that sounds like it's close together, right? You're thinking a five and a three. Oh, those are pretty close. They're only two numbers apart, folks. That is a very large difference in the size of the bars. And everything that we're doing here is size, speed, internals, and just you don't, they, they, they change. Just read what's on your chart. <laughs> don't overthink it. I think that's the best thing to answer it. Um, you're asking why? Uh, it's internally how, the, how it works, and I, I can't. You know, I'm not going to go into details of what I'm measuring internal to that. Um, but yeah, just they're going to be different. Higher time frame, lower time frame. If you're entering in, if you get a setup on. I mean, that should tell you to go long, right? Like I'm not even looking at the chart above. That should tell you to go long. Yes. Now you're like, well, why does this one tell me to go long? <laughs> the bigger one, the bigger is better. All right. Um, so the spikes are just dispersed, uh, essentially not stacked. Here's some of the theory behind MACV. Okay. When I'm waiting. So MACV is simply moving average cross. MAC moving average cross. What does that mean? Two moving averages crossing past each other. Hey, I'm coming your way. 50 over the 200, which is traditional on our golden ropes, is a spot, etc. Basically, shifting sentiment and movement on the overall picture over the X number, last X number of bars. Um, when I'm waiting on favorable direction, I'm wondering what caused it to switch to long, even after it's been going up for some time. Is the angle of attack, speed, volume? Okay, so those are two different things. Favorable direction has to do with the daily bar. As simple as that. I'm using daily, um, and this is part of my theory on trading okay everybody's got different opinions on this i basically take the open line again when there's multiple ways to solve a solution with the end result being the same kiss theory and occam's razor says the simplest solution is the best solution this has to do with the shift over the open that is the answer for the favorable direction where that can shift well even when it's you know like what you're saying like well wait a minute it looks like it's been going down all day but all of a sudden it went long yeah that's that's what it is angle of attack speed volume no um, just curious when you anticipate a change in direction. Sometimes I feel like I'm waiting forever. Um, I mean, you can, and it'll tell you on your chart if you have, um, where's your Sandy line? Uh, it looks like you're missing. Oh no, you do. It's, it's on this one. So there's a Sandy line. Um, look for the Sandy line. I'll post you a screenshot later on that. So there are three lines to know. Green, top side, is gonna be high of day. Red, you got low of day. And the one that's important here on the one we're talking about is a dashed line in the middle. This is kind of the line in the sand and it's literally sandy color looking, right? And I do that for that line in the sand. I make it sandy color, right? I try to keep everything so that your brain doesn't have to think about a whole lot of stuff that we just put all the, put all the brains in the tools that the tools do the work. And so when it shifts past this line, and I call it the open line. You hear me say, hey, oh, we're approaching the open line. Okay, I think I do talk about that in some videos, but if you haven't gotten those yet or didn't hone in on it, it's okay. It's the open line. So the favorable direction shifts at that open line. You got it? Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's been answered at some point. Uh, studies to ask good questions. Yeah, sorry, it's okay. Um, but the strats that work best changing over time, and what are the best, your favorites are recently? Eh, look. Different strategies for different speeds. If you want to measure it out, speed of market, think about it. And the speed of market 
strategies. When you're choosing your strategy, you want some strategies that you're going to pick for fast markets. You need to pick ones for slow markets. Okay. So uh, what's an example? Uh, Plover. If Plover is one of your favorites. Okay. Plover is only good in what market? Pop quiz. Fast. We want fast markets for the Plover. Okay. So fast markets on the Plover. Um, things that are slower. I really don't like to trade slow markets at all. Um, but the dots tend to hold a lot because there's lots of confluence at those spots and the market just can't get anywhere. So it turns at every little turn. So the dots, um, again, so you need a, don't just take a dot. Remember, we never trade a dot by itself unless you're adding to a position, then it's an additive entry location, but we do not just enter in on a dot by itself. You need other things. Okay. But a, um, any dot traditional entry. So, um, HMD double dot in slow markets. Um, there is no, basically what's best. Look, I want you eventually to learn all of them. Like no, know, know all of them and know market context at that moment and feel it out. And you're going to be like, look, I don't trade just one or two or three. I'm like, what's currently open. Oh, look, there's a J hook right there. Now I'm not going to trade the J hook just automatically like J hook. What do we got? Long's favorable. Good long J hook. Excellent. Uh, well, let me see. I'm going to wait for a volume. What's the, I'm not volume. Well, let me look at the Delta. Oh, the Delta hasn't, oh, there's, okay. There's a Delta spike, Delta spike. Now I'm looking for an entry. Go. Now I'm combining those together. So understanding what our stuff works together. This is how you play the game at a higher level. Now, can you play the game without the higher level? Yeah. I mean, you can literally just go out there and, and blind fire at our strategies. They are that good. Inherent edge is there. And if you play it out over time, you know, you'll, you'll be positive on that just from the edge internal, but it's, yeah, you're going to be small. Okay. You want, you want to push that edge, right? You, you are about taking your edge and pushing it to be the difference between, you know, a few, few hundred, a few thousand, etc. Um, I'm doing, uh, Roger says, I have two questions. Oh, a bunch of questions. One, um, when doing market replay, should I input the proper range settings on? Oh, we answered that one. That's good. Uh, if I stopped out on a double cross, what would be the potential re-entry point if price goes back to the area? The center of the crosses of the tail. The center of the crosses. Yep, center of the crosses. Same place. Same, same entry location, same uh, measurement, same place that you measure from. Yes. Center of the crosses. If it gets back in the middle of those crosses, go for it. Um, if MGC too thin to trade, about one third the volume of GC. Thinness only matters at the bid ask. And I do not talk about micros. I think micros are crap. So don't talk to me about micros really in general. Um, don't, I mean, I just, I don't trade micros at all and I wouldn't. Um, how should I interpret the bottom portion of Mac V? Bottom portion of Mac V. Oh, okay. Histogram, anybody's background color, etc. That can help you. In fact, I have shown if you want to expand that out and make it larger, and you've just got some big visual cue over there on the left, um, I give you specific regions around how to read those. But again, if you're trying to part hairs with it, you're using the Mac V improperly. Go back and watch the Mac V videos on how I, you know, that gray area thing that I show you guys, like, you know, within eight bars, there's that gray zone on the Mac V. Um, if you are, sorry, I don't have my charts open here tonight and, um, should have, uh, so we got red, we've got, uh, we've got green. Okay. And then we got the gray area around it. So you kind of just picture like, oh, you know, there's a, there's a gray area of green here over it, but it's gotta be past that to really tell you we're really strong into that section. Okay. And when these things get together, you know, when they're to debt together, we're talking about, oh, it's like, it's like Christmas. So we know like, Hey, might maybe a time to lay off. But if you're, what he's talking about is the histogram underneath. And when this, like the entire section, even though this is crossing over, but this has been green the entire time. And even though this says red, cause it's flipped over, but this is still green. What's great is you can go when this thing starts to turn red, well, now we're good, right? We got these in combination. You definitely, at this point, when this happens, when this trifecta occurs, 
Look, you do not, 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 not want to take shorts, right? That's that's how you do it. And we'll go and I'll probably do a separate video on that. It's a good question. Using the MacV histogram, but I've got two pretty advanced level videos on MacV. I would just follow it the way I've got it. But if you want to use the histogram thing, I don't talk about it too much. I just try to keep it simple. Remember, all that means is your bias. Okay. It does not mean, I mean, I always tell you like, look, if you want to not get yourself in trouble, just don't ever trade against the MACV and you'll be in good shape. Right. So, but the histogram thing it probably needs its own video. Should I be programming actions for the G keys on the key, K55 keyboard? I used to have more on mine. I don't use them at all anymore because I don't draw very much anymore. Back in the day when I used to have to draw, um, when I draw trend lines and channels and wedges and all that kind of stuff that traditional whatnot that you had to draw, I used to have a bunch. So now I don't. Um, so use them for things that are fun, popping between different things. Um, there are some people that have keys bound for buy and sell if they don't want to click their mouse. Um, but I, I do not have any, so no, the answer is no, but that keyboard is the bomb.com. If you are using it's a membrane based keyboard, um, and super handy. Um, here we go. We're getting to our last couple of questions. Favorable direction is based on where price is relative to the opening price. Oh, he's answering a question. Yes. Thank you, Rick, for answering that question. And we did answer that. Um, Rick said to give me a hand a question. When you guys are king timing, what does that mean exactly? All right, here's our final question. King timing. Um, I like this question. King timing. This comes down to S M L K. What are these? So we got small, medium, large, and king sized. These are our colorings like this. All right. And these are our vertical, our vertical lines. So the king timing um looks like this okay, so this one and so when price passes on the other side of this what we're looking for is an event what we call the event and we would like the event to happen at or near that king timing line okay so king timing line, that's what we're referring to. You're like, oh, and sometimes you get, oh, double king. So you got, oh, two lines pretty close, two of them crossing over. I mean, this is like the honey spot right here. Um, this just goes, hey, uh, if I'm trying to decide on big or small, this is one of those spots that really adds to it. We also have strategies specifically around this for one of the examples is the Delta King. Delta. Delta King. Delta King strategy is straight off of the timing bar plus the Delta. I mean, Delta King, what a beast. All right. So big red, big red flag at the bottom lands right in time on the line right there. And what are we doing? Boop. Going for the long side. Stop right underneath the pivot right there. It's a beauty. And I'm a beast. All right. Now let's look at some results. I told you guys we're going to hit some of the results. Um, we got two minutes, two minutes. Hang with me. Folks, the results this week have been absolutely outstanding. You guys have been smashing it. Uh, FX Iceman, 1,200. Yangi saying she's loving the Sharks. I'd say so. Uh, 2,500, yeah. Profit factor, 2.83. 76% profitable. Uh, yeah, I think so. Speaking of, don't forget, profit factor is the most important. There's Neon throwing down 1,100. Excellent work. Let's look at some more. There's a 200 micros. Um, let's go over here to Nick. 400 bucks. Where's that profit factor? Profit factor 2.78. That means winners 2.78 times the size of the losers. That is the most important thing. 88% profitable on top of that. Very nice work. Remo 3,600. Look at these stats, folks. Again, if you are missing out on these stats, I don't even know what to tell you. You're missing out. Here's KC. Again, if you guys missed our KC interview, you know, he, he is able to trade multiple accounts using our system he uses he does his i believe it's his two retirement accounts an ira account maybe in a futures account um but yeah just absolutely outstanding pip thing 3476 percent profitable profit factor 5.85 absolutely outstanding numbers if you guys have not seen what is going on in our trade room you are gonna be missing out so if you're trying to get training again there's a training link down below how do we trade our five trades this is you know print one of these out for yourself this will help you track your trades as you go. There's a six bonus trade, depending on how you are up on the day or down. Um, 
And if you want to get those, again, head over here to the, the website is a good place to start, vinnymini.com. This section right here, strategy training, the link, this is the one that takes you to in the description down below in the video. These videos right here, this is where you're really going to get everything. These just go straight to, okay, what's an HMD entry? What's a harmonic shark? What uh, shark back, sorry, shark back, shark tail. There's two strategies in that one. Headshot strategy, diamond dot. Oh, these are just great strategies just get into them see them right away and then we kind of push you forward into a few more of those and then we get into what we call the core in library number three okay this is where the rubber really starts to meet the road things about filtering understanding fomc understanding context and whatnot but you'll find that again in our system that is less important when you're trading with that because our strategies are really giving you those pinpoint entry locations and exits so Trade it out. Let the edge play out. That is what trading is all about. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Happy Friday. Let's have a fantastic weekend. I will catch you there on Monday. Thanks for hanging out. For me, Pippi, Robbie, Lunchbot, Mod Squad, Curtis, G, and the rest of the gang. Let's send out the big H-Town. See y'all.